You guys know how much I love Mario. I mean, like half of my videos are dedicated to him. In fact, my very first countdown was top 10 Mario bosses. Ever since then, the overall quality of my videos have improved, and recently I decided that it was time for me to go over my top 10 least favorite Mario bosses. Whether they be insultingly easy or so hard that you want to throw your GameCube off a 12-story building, these are the bosses that you really wish you could forget about. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! The Galaxy series had some of the downright best bosses in the entire series. It also had some of the easiest. Top Maniac, for example. He may look intimidating at first, but he really only has one attack, charging at you. To beat this guy, all you need to do is ground pound at his obvious weak spot and knock him into the electric barrier. Repeat this three times, and Top Maniac is dead. That's it. No second form, no change in attack pattern, he doesn't even attack you any faster. All he does is summon a few enemies, which are also really easy to kill. This guy was so pathetic that one of the videos of the battle that I found incorrectly referred to him as a mini boss. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! The next entry is one that I'm sure many of you will disagree with, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Back to some of the more classic Mario games, the Koopalings were awesome. When they were brought back in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, they were even cooler. But seriously, Nintendo, do you need to keep using them in every single game you make? No matter how they attack you, no matter where you face them, all you need to do to win is jump on their head three times. It's almost like they're too lazy to come up with an original boss. Remember the battles you faced in the original New Super Mario Bros.? Those were awesome! Luckily, Super Mario 3D World doesn't have the Koopalings in it, making this little thing called creativity possible. Thank goodness. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Mario and Luigi Partners in Time also had some great boss battles, like Sunnyside. It also had Shrew Boy Brat, my least favorite boss in the Mario and Luigi series. His attack pattern is extremely predictable, and most of his attempts at damaging you aren't very hard to evade either. In fact, the only reason True Boy Brett possesses any sort of threat is because he has over 1,000 health. That's over twice the amount of the last boss. And how many lollipops does this guy have? He pulls dozens out of his mouth during the battle, and each one is almost as big as his head. Whatever, it's Nintendo logic. Best not to question. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy 2 was generally an easy game, but honestly, some of the boss fights were just plain epic. However, most of them were also really easy, especially King Lakitu. Wow, this guy is so hard. His attacks are almost impossible to dodge, and the way to defeat him definitely takes a long time to figure out. I mean, he's not even moving around very much, he just floats there, leaving him completely open to shoot a spiny at him. Wow, I barely made it out of that one alive. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Super Mario 64 may have been the first 3D game in the series, but that doesn't excuse it for having terrible boss fights. There were a few good ones, but most were infamously easy, such as the Womp King. This guy is basically just a Womp who has three lives. Of course, it's never uncommon for a boss to just be a giant version of a common enemy, but at least they usually try to add something new. With a Womp King, all you need to do is wait for him to fall on his face, then ground pound his back. Repeat this two more times, and guess what happens? He's dead. You know, I'm sensing a common theme with these entries. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Petey Piranha. Wait, 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 let me explain. The first battle against him was awesome. It's the second battle that takes me off. When you finally wake the freaking thing up, it heads to the village and starts flying around? It doesn't attack you very often, so the swooping stews are more of a threat than the boss himself. To beat this guy, you only need to do a lot of platforming, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it seems that every time I finally reach him, he starts flying away in the other direction. To beat PD of Piranha, all you need to do is shoot at him until he falls down, squirt water in his mouth, then ground pound his belly when he topples over. Oh, and get this, to win, you need to do this, shock, three times. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! You know what I hate? 
when a certain item or character can be used to make a boss insultingly easy. Like Twin Mode from Majora's Mask. If you get the Giant's Mask, you can use the Chateau Romani to get infinite magic. Then there is no way you can lose. Same applies to Bone Chill from Super Paper Mario. As long as you're willing to lose a little bit of health, you can beat him just by spamming Luigi's jump attack on his head. I am not kidding when I say that people have beaten him in under a minute solely by using this attack. Sure, that would be fine if it was the first boss in the game, but no, it was the second to last. Oh, but trust me, this isn't the last Paper Mario boss you'll see on the list. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! <laughs> Looking back, Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini Land Mayhem was actually a decent puzzle game. It's the bosses that were loud enough. Especially the climactic final battle on the Ferris wheel. Now, I'll admit, making a good final battle for a puzzle game is hard. But couldn't they have done better than this? Whatever, to beat Donkey Kong, all you need to do is shoot your mini Marios at him enough times, which can be tricky, as he doesn't just sit there and take damage. To fight back, he places obstacles to deflect your robots, spins the Ferris wheel around to grab them, and shoots missiles at you from his. Wait a minute, what? This is followed by what may be the stupidest scene in the entire game, and that's saying something. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Finally, I can talk about how much I hate this guy. Big Bomb Bomb from Super Mario 64 is an absolute joke. I mean, sure, he's the first boss, but that's not an excuse for this pathetic boss. I mean, it's not like Nintendo can't pull off an opening boss, but that was cool, and that was on the same system. To beat Big Bomb Bomb, all you need to do is grab him from behind and throw him three times. In fact, one of the reasons that I like the DS remake more is that there are two battles against him. The really lame one, and the half decent one where you use Yoshi to spit out the bomb on the back of him. Overall, Big Bomb Bomb is a terrible opening boss, but there is one Mario boss that I think beats it out. By a lot. Mario! How dare you disturb my family vacation! Paper Mario Sticker Star. What can I say that hasn't already been said about this game? I mean, it's one thing to make the first boss in the game ridiculously easy, but to make it exceptionally hard is another. Like King Goomba. Okay, first of all, King Goomba. Wow, that's much more creative than Hook Hill or Mac the Knife. Second, I freaking hate this boss. The first time I fought it, I tried using this little thing called strategy. I died. I tried again, this time making sure I was more careful. I died. The third time, I realized that I had to use a certain sticker to win. Wait a minute, what? That was just some random sticker I picked up, thinking it was a special move or something. How was I supposed to know that it was required to beat a boss? You know, I like having a challenging boss fight, but this is taking it way too far. I also feel like this battle required no strategy. As long as you have the sticker, you can just use it in the fight is basically over. I mean, I'm impressed. How could any game, let alone a freaking Paper Mario game, have such a terrible boss fight? Not only that, but I've heard that the other bosses in Sticker Star are even worse. <sighs> Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. Die! Die! Die!